on to our deep dives. Um, we'll do these a little quickly, but first, Hannah for data transfer. I'm Hannah from Bedrock, um, and I'm excited to introduce uh, an effort our team is exploring to supercharge the ways we are able to move data around our networks. First of all, I want to help folks understand what we have today. Um, you've probably heard uh, the words BitSwap and GraphSync. I want to talk briefly about what they are and how they're different. Both of these protocols move IPLD data around LibP2P networks. The analogy I've been using to help non-programmers understand is this. BitSwap is roughly designed like BitTorrent, while GraphSync is roughly designed by, uh, like HTTP. That means they shine best in different scenarios. BitSwap, like BitTorrent, is good for moving highly distributed content from many peers where each individual peer might have low bandwidth, like a home computer. GraphSync, like HTTP, functions great for downloading data from high bandwidth servers like storage providers. Um, the other big difference between the protocols is a historical artifact of how they were built. Um, BitSwap is the bread and butter of IPFS, while GraphSync was written in the course of Filecoin development. This has led to some big difference in the implementations we produce. These aren't differences that are inherent to the protocol, but they're nonetheless quite significant. GoGraphSync supports layers for payments and authorization, while GoBitSwap Go keeps everything free. And not only that, but GoGraphSync provides multiple layers of control to our operators, while GoBitSwap has very little, has a lot less configurability. This has led, uh, in newer situations, to a kind of a difficult trade-off. Um, we are starting to see in like retrieval markets, um, it would be nice to be able to reach to e for either protocol without having to think about what is and isn't supported in terms of things like payments and authorizations. It's a tough trade-off right now. Retrieval markets, for example, needs multi-peer transfers, but also they're going to need payments eventually. What do they use? Right. And this is what Project Thunder is trying to answer. But why not both? <laughs> um, we want to make each project protocol more powerful and flexible. So it isn't really a choice. I shouldn't have to say if I build for Filecoin, I use GrassLink. If I build for IPFS, I'm kind of stuck on BitSwap. Or if I use BitSwap, I can't use have payments. The auto retrieve project you'll hear about next is great for bridging IPFS and Filecoin. But in the long term, one shouldn't need to run a server to translate transfer protocols. And it's not just about making these choices easier. We can actually use one protocol to fill in the gaps with the other. BitSwap lags behind BitTorrent in performance sometimes because BitTorrent starts with more information at the start about the structure of data you're downloading. So what if GraphSync could be used to quickly discover that information? How much faster could BitSwap be? These are the kinds of questions we're aiming to answer. So anyway, how are we gonna do all this? Um, well, this is what you're going to get for the five minute version. Uh, no, seriously, I tried to make like a super simple architectural guide and no matter how much I cut it down, the answer will be unsatisfactory unless I'm taking the other geek dives uh, time and I'm not going to do that. That's not what you do to teammates. Suffice to say, it's complicated. In terms of what we're doing right now, um, uh, we have two protocols and several layers of payments that only work with GrassSync. In our current work, uh, Bedrock is re-architecting the higher level layers to be full, fully protocol neutral, while IPFS stewards are building the hooks in BitSwap to make it possible to support payments. This is complicated, slow work, but you will see, hopefully, a grow uh, re-architected GoData transfer V2, um, in, it says in a month or so, but I just heard two weeks. So in two weeks, it will be here. But here's a ton of more information. Um, you can read the detailed project proposal and roadmap. It proposed extensions to Dick BitSwap. Watch a video on how we're re-architecting go data transfer. And you can also follow progress at hashtag data transfer in interop on Phil Slack. Um, and you can check the slides to dig into these. I might maybe do a, a, a like a, a deeper dive for programmers at some point. One last thing. Um, we may not get this work done super soon. Protocol, these kinds of protocol changes are really hard. They're always hard every time we do them. Um, they're long-term investments and they don't always have super visible win like immediate wins, but they have very big long-term wins. So our team, it's possible we may need to get reallocated at some point for immediate priorities, but my hope is we're gonna get there and that we're gonna invest as an organization in this kind of low-level work to unlock these key long-term benefits for our network. That's all. Awesome, thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, on to Will for auto retrieve. So auto retrieve, we've mentioned a couple times. This is one of the stop gaps that we're putting in place, uh, so that in the short term, we can make content that's in Filecoin accessible to IPFS, to gateways, uh, and just more generally um, bridge some of the protocol uh, gaps that we've got at the moment. Uh, 
It also serves a secondary purpose, which is it gives us a lot more view into the state of retrievals uh, and lets us uh, work with data programs uh, to, to sort of help uh, set up the right incentives to encourage storage providers to ramp up on their retrieval bandwidth and their infrastructure so that they can serve the amounts of retrievals that we're expecting to keep growing. So this is running. Uh, it, we've, we've recently switched it to a Kubernetes deployment that we can keep running pretty stably. Um, we're working through some ongoing resource management uh, stuff so that uh, it not only is running, but also serving at high quality. You can see some gaps in the success failure rate where it runs out of memory currently. Um, all this work is thanks to Elijah on the outer core team and Kyle on the bedrock team. But more generally, what this is going to mean is that when you go to IPFS.io, uh, what will happen is that will uh, go back to the big IPFS node that is that gateway. It will be peered. And so it's bit swap requests. We'll talk to its peers. And one of the peers will be this auto retrieve node, which looks like an IPFS node um, that is just sort of in the IPFS network. Um, right now, uh, you need to be peered. Um, the, the, what that means is it's serving currently um, IPFS nodes that are in the DHT server uh, ring because it automatically connects to them. Um, but if you're another IPFS client, you're not getting the full benefit quite yet because you won't necessarily be connected. Those bits off requests um, will then be seen by auto retrieve who will ask the store the index indexing node for those SIDs. When those SIDs are found from a storage provider uh, on Filecoin, it will then make a graph sync request to pull that content locally into its own cache. And then we'll say that it has those blocks um, and be able to respond to them over bit swap. Uh, so it acts like a block cache. It keeps a, a relatively large um, order of tens to hundreds of gigs of blocks that it knows about uh, in cache that it's pulled from storage providers. Um, but the thought is that these are transient. We can eventually have them running in the same regions as gateway instances uh, and just generally use this as a short term over the next month's uh, way to bridge uh, until we get some vertical upgrades. Uh, I will leave it there. Uh, there's an auto-retrieve channel in Falcon Slack. Awesome, thank you so much. And on to Jennifer Pelotas. A lot of you may know since PLV7, the huge big Falcon team has getting, you know, decoupled to a lot of like smaller teams. And over the time, uh, we have Byrox working on market problems. Uh, there will be tickets, I swear. Uh, the Lotus team has tried to find our own like definition, our own entity in the whole Falcon community and ecosystem team. So that's what we are sharing here today with you, like what our thinking is. Uh, on the left side, as you can see, we're a small team still. We have eight, eight folks with four engineers and four uh, technical support engineers that have been super helpful for a lot of the things. Uh, our mission and scope first is like we serve Filecoin network. Uh, we ship the protocol along with other implementation and teams. We want to make sure all the node operators can run a Lotus a node and talk to the network, talk to the chain, building their application. Developers is a huge, huge focus uh, for our like user group. Uh, as you may already know, Lotus is slowly stepping back from the market development. However, we want to be able to, to enable folks like Baroque engineers to build a uh, market protocols on top of Lotus. Uh, and also when the FEM is coming, we want to make sure that developers can also have a very good uh, uh, experience, basically like on um, block enable a lot of use case on top of Falcoin. That's why we think the developer is a super important community that Lotus should like focus on. The other one, we don't have to, to say storage providers. We need them to get like, you know, uh, all this uh, data into the network. Uh, and also like user support. We want to make sure that, you know, we maintain a good open source like community uh, and help us further build the Falcoin network. And next slide, please. So that's our mission scope. And how do we ship all these things? So we have a bunch of things like Lotus trying to do. Uh, so most of you will be curious. I feel like uh, the P2P IPLD we have been, uh, and proof team, we have been working uh, very closely to get their stack also shipped in Lotus as we are a user of uh, their tech. So how Lotus does things today is like we ship monthly feature releases, which always is an optional release. Uh, it includes a lot of like shiny things, new features. We are still like shipping on like 
a go fuel market that kind of works behalf, like all those Chinese things going into that. But mostly we are focused on maintenance a lot. We spend a lot of time to do bug fixes, like pay off the uh, tech debt just to make sure our user can be happy and use the Lotus in their production line stably. And we also have mandatory release, which is for network upgrade. Those are like less you know, stable on the timeline because like, whatever Falcon needs an upgrade, we will do the same. Uh, as you can see here in the screenshot, we, have, we haven't been missing a monthly future release uh, for, I would say, eight months now. Even when we ship like mandatory network upgrade release, we also make sure we keep the uh, future releases going just to make sure all the development in master is, uh, is shipped. So how can we get the things developed and like you know coordinate into these releases? So we have a, a set of like processes. So first to start with, we start our day in the team with cat and memes, as you already know. Uh, you can see here, these are our Lotus cat. And we also have memes going on. So to make our life a little bit more fun, get into the real work. So a lot of time that is our technical support engineering team is doing is to make sure that we charge the incoming issues in GitHub or like in Slack or GitHub discussion within 48 hours. So the dev team knows the immediate thing that needs to be looked at to make sure nothing broke. And also to feed into our backlog of the things. Uh, next slide, please. There are things that it's like, oh my God, you have to fix that immediately. Otherwise, Falcon Network may die. But a lot of the other things will be going into the Lotus backlog. So basically our TS team TSC team will be putting out this like weekly charge summary, which feed into our spring planning. Um, before I get into the spring planning, I do want to say another thing we do is like we do culture project backlog charge prioritization and roadmap planning. Because like Lotus is still trying to, it's still kind of like a, a stakeholder of the core development of the Falcon network. And because we are within PLN, working closely with a lot of other teams like protocol. Opportunity team, CLL, Consensus Lab, DRAN team, we kind of know more like what's coming, like, you know, uh, in the six months or a year basis. And that's why we try to keep everything in our backlog just, just to keep everyone informed, including the Falcon Foundation and other, uh, other core apps. So we do a quarterly project back, uh, backlog charge just to help us understanding what's need to be in the next network upgrade and start planning. Uh, so for that, uh, so that's a cross they say, and we also within the Lotus and uh, Lotus team, we have our bi-weekly thinking section. So this is a time we, you know, a lot of other teams is doing amazing work in the ecosystem. It's hard to keep up. So this is our chance to catch up with the world and, you know, to, just like to understand like what may be ready to come to us and have we have to be the shipping ship of their work. Uh, so this is the part we trying to understand the problem needs to be solved and learn a lot of the new work that other people are doing, like DRAM, time encryption, or like sharding and all those things. After all this planning and like uh, backlog feeding, we do our monthly spring planning. Uh, so basically this is like a week before the before the code freeze, we will pick up what are we going to ship for the next week. We will make sure that we have bug to, uh, to be analysis, uh, implementing some like low honey fruit features and implementing the projects that's in our roadmap. Uh, next slide. We're almost done. Uh, and so those are all the development work, work we are trying to do. Uh, and on on like community engagement and project management, we also have weekly community updates that's shared in Phil Lotus announcement channel. Uh, I will suggest you, uh, I will like recommend you to, to join that channel to get the timely updates from our team. Uh, we are also generating library reports just to inform you uh, all the feedbacks we're getting from the Filecoin community in general, what their pain points are what are the use case new use cases people are looking forward to so that we can unblock them so like as you already know we always have a lot of things going on however we do want to say like we welcome all the incoming requests to get into our backlog we cannot guarantee when we can get into that but we commit that we will you know eventually go through them uh, one by one by, by with you guys or like with grants or external teams. So you can be super helpful if you give us precise ask on like, 
the problem and the issue and what the user story and what the pain points is, are, like those can help us prioritize all these requests. And you are running a new project, for example, or a program for like evergreen or slingshot, you need our support to like, you know, just to like set a good foundation of the program. Let us know if you give us like one to two, one to three months of like lead time, we probably can find time to work with you and be responsive with your participants. The other thing we want to do is like onboarding and support the open source co uh, contributors. Uh, so if you know any dev team that can be good for us to collaborate, please let us know. We want to establish those uh, relationships. Yes, said a lot of things. So how can you actually find us? Uh, again, uh, create the issue is always the way to go. Lotus is our uh, GitHub repository, or you can go in, go to the built-in actor. We are one of the co-maintainer of that as well. We are very responsive in the public field Lotus dev channel, even more responsive than the DMs. Uh, but if you want to reach out to our team, uh, like having a meeting, have a have a talk or whatever, you can reach out to me in DM as well at Jenny Juju. But again, I check the public channel more often. We do have office hours, but honestly, just join the field office, most of our, our engineers just like, love hanging out there. So like, if you want to talk to us, join the office. Uh, everything I just presented you, you see the public notion page, there's a link there. You can see our roadmap, our release schedule, our mission and scope, everything there. And we started our Twitter account early this year, and we started to trying to build our own profile there. So followers and likes are highly appreciated. Um, that's that. <laughs>